What's going on everybody? Back at you with another video today. And in today's video we're going to be doing a blowout slash taper with a number four on top and a one and a half on the sides. So we're going to start out with our Andis Masters and the Andis Magnetic number four guard with the uh, lever all the way closed, which is the equivalent to a number four. I'm also thinking about starting a vlog guys, so uh, get active in the comments. Let me know if you guys want me to start a vlog. A lot of big news coming up. We uh, today, as a matter of fact, opened up our number five shop or our fifth shop in Lando Lakes. So uh, get active in the comments. Like I said, let me know. Uh, here I'm using the Andex Magnetic number one guard with the lever all the way open, which is the equivalent to a one and a half. We're going to start creating our first guideline after we've established a four on top. Always make sure to brush, have a comb or a brush in your hand and always be brushing or combing so you can get an idea or see exactly the way the hair is growing and to see the work that you've done. Here I'm using the Andis, Andis Magnetic number two guard with the lever all the way open which is the equivalent to a two and a half. And as you can see I'm kind of coming up off the head as I get towards the top. I'm not really digging or following the shape of his head. I'm going to start closing that notch or that lever on the side of the clipper notch by notch until I close it to a number two, which is the equivalent or that would blend into the one and a half, excuse me. And it would be the equivalent to a number two. You see here that I'm cutting against the direction that the hair grows. I want to make sure you do that. Alright, so now I'm here back using the Andis Magnetic number one guard. I'm gonna make sure I stress that to you guys because that was one of the issues I had when I was in school. I would follow the steps and if you did the one and a half on the bottom already and you closed the lever all the way closed with the number two, you figure they would blend right in and it should. But in some cases you just gotta go back over and just do some touch up. You can't just follow the steps and then stop. You gotta make sure you do touch up to make sure. You could obviously see that there was a little bit of weight there. So I went ahead and grabbed my number one guard and using the corners of the blade, just kind of went back over it and touched it up. Make sure I got rid of all that weight. Here I'm using the Andis T outliners and uh, I'm establishing the first guideline to begin the taper or blowout. Now we're using the Andis masters with the lever all the way open. And using the corners of the blade, I'm going to create almost like a C, like a half moon. And then we're going to start closing the lever notch by notch and working our way down to the guideline that we created with the Andis T outliner until we've blended it all the way out. Now remember that we used the Andis one and a half on the sides, the Andis magnetic purple guard. So here I'm using the Andis magnetic purple guard but with the lever all the way closed which is the equivalent to a number one and then we work our way into that one and a half. Here I'm using the end zero guard with the lever all the way open and I'm blending right into that number one and then close it all the way down until we blend it right into that half. Now we're going to repeat the same process on the other side. We're going to create almost a half moon or a C shape after we establish our guideline with the Andis T outliner and then we're going to close the lever notch by notch and work our way down until we've blended it completely out. And then we're going to use our number one guard with the lever all the way closed, which is the equivalent to a number one. And we're going to blend into that one and a half. 
Then obviously we grab our Andis Magnetic Zero Guard with the lever all the way open and start blending into that one and close it all the way down notch by notch being mindful to use the corners of our blade until we blend into that half. Now here I'm back using the Andis T outliners and like I said you got to use it almost like a pencil you want to use the corners of the blade or the edge of the blade like a pencil and it's almost like you're drawing the edge. Again, just doing some touch up work here. And now we're going to create our guideline in the back. We're going to start off with the masters with the lever all the way open and go up about a quarter of an inch to half an inch. Here we're closing the lever notch by notch. And as we close the lever, you can see that I'm going up less and less and I'm starting to use more of the corners of my blades. Specifically, when you have a new client in your chair, you want to use more of the corners of your blade. I've been cutting this gentleman's hair for years. So for me, it just comes naturally. I don't even have to think about it. I know how high I can go, how not, how low, you know, I have to go or uh, I just know his hair very well. Here I'm using the Andis Magnetic number one guard. And same thing like on the sides, since we did the one and a half all the way around on the sides, I just go straight to the lever all the way closed, which is the equivalent to a one, and I'm blending right into that one and a half. Here I'm using the Andis Magnetic Zero Garden with the lever all the way open. And I start blending into that number one that I just established and then close the lever notch by notch until I work my way down to the half. outliners and I'm starting the edge in the back you want to be careful not to make too much of a V in the back a V shape just follow the natural hairline and it'll look just fine Doing the same thing on this side and here as you can see I noticed that there's still a little bit of weight in the back so I go ahead and grab my Andis Masters and I start doing some touch-up work to get that flawless blend So here I'm using my T outliners and I'm beginning to do the edge in the front. You want to make sure you brush the hair all the way down. Make sure you get it even all the way across. So here I'm using my shave gel, Tomb 45. You can get yours at tomb45.com. 
It's phenomenal. It's absolutely hands down the best shave gel ever. It creates some of the best. It has some of the best ingredients in it over any other shave gel on the market. You got aloe vera in it, vitamin E that helps rebuild the skin, helps prevent any razor burn or irritations. It also has glycerin in it. The glycerin helps the blade slide. There's nothing more frustrating than when I put shave gel, as you can see here, on both sides of the edge. And by the time I get to the other side, it's dry. You'll notice that when I'm shaving here, it does not dry up. This is a phenomenal product, and uh, the best price, the best thing is the price. Six bucks for an eight ounce bottle. You literally cannot beat that. It's the best price, best shave gel on the market. Again, www.tune45.com. You can go get yours. See, I, I make sure to pull the skin tight on top and just let the blade do the work. You don't want to press too much or be too aggressive with the blade. Just lay it flat, pull the skin tight, and let the blade do the work. You also got to learn to use the heel of the blade, which is the back part of the blade. But sometimes there's some angles that you can't get with the front side of the blade or putting the full blade down on the skin. So you gotta learn how to use the heel. Here I'm just cleaning up the sideburns, make sure it blends right in. And again guys, get active in the comments. Let me know if you guys want me to start that vlog. Let me know if you guys want me to start using my Snapchat a little more. Uh, I appreciate all the love. I appreciate all the subscribers. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe. And as always, I appreciate your time. Share this video, and I'll see y'all next week.